Well, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, ladies. I'm Amanda Thompson. I'm coming here live in the She Network, where we share her excellence, where we edify, empower, encourage women. So we're so happy to have you here today. So as you guys are coming on, ladies, let us know you're here. Please say hi. We want to see uh, where you're coming in from. If this is your first time, make sure you let us know. We want to welcome you. And if this is a replay, make sure you let us know, hashtag replay. So. I want to introduce my special friend here, Miss Lorna Moon. Lorna, how are you today? I am fantastic. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. We're so happy to have, have you here. Um, I love, love, love you, your story. I'm so excited about sharing this. And as we go through this process, ladies, because uh, hearing her journey and where she's come from and where she is now, like... They're really the you know the 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 te the the testimony is through the test right the yes. the message is always through the mess right mm -hmm. and, how, and how do you do that and how do you pull those pieces together so so Miss Lorna tell yes. us tell us about you so I uh, my my big focus in life and and my mission in life is uplifting women of all ages so younger women teenage women girls and and us women and adults. And my big reason for that is, I mean, there's lots of reasons for that, but my own upbringing as a teen, my mom was very sick with cancer and she passed away when I was 16. And so I didn't have that, that female strong role model and that guidance in my life. Um, you know, my mom was sick for most of my life and she wasn't able to be that role model. And because of were that, you, were you an only child? I mean, like to, to lose your mom at such a formidable age, there were four of us. So I was the second oldest. Um, okay. When my mom passed away, my older sister was 18. And then I, you know, I had two younger siblings. And so I was always kind of like mom's helper, like from the time I was little, like holding under her pant legs, learning how to cook, learning how to do all that stuff. So I kind of stepped up to that role as my mom was sick and, and able to, you know, make lunches and, and make dinner for the family and stuff. So I kind of stepped into that role. And didn't really have that guidance other than, you know, what I watched her do. Yeah. Wow. And, and so losing my mom at such a young age, I grew up without that female role model and that, you know, <laughs> that female to get good advice from. So you don't do a bunch of dumb stuff. Yeah. And I made a lot of mistakes, a lot, a lot, a lot of mistakes. So, I mean, so in this process, I mean, I can imagine like, you know, that age that had to have made you kind of angry. I mean, to, I mean, like to be, to, to be robbed of your mom at, at such a formidable age, right? Yes. Uh, I would say probably create a sense of, of rebellion even. Yes. So on one hand, since I have like this anger and this rebellion and kind of being mad at God for taking my mom and for my mom being sick and all my prayers going unanswered with her being healed. But I always have this strong sense of like duty and getting things done and being that person that you can rely on. And so balancing like this one side, complete rebellion. So I did a lot of drugs and drank and boys. And then on the other side, trying to uphold, you know, some sense of stability for my younger siblings. Wow. So really this dichotomy. Yeah. <laughs> like that's, that, 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 that's, that's like one end of the spectrum to the other. Like, um, you know, dealing with your own stuff, but at the same time, you know, having that, I will call it that red personality, you know, that yeah. one, the leader, right. Yes. And feeling like, okay, this is not the right way to lead, but I'm dealing, I've got to navigate through my own, you know, external, uh, yeah. internal, you know, battle that I'm going through. Um, so, so how did you break through? I mean, what, what got you through that process in the, in, in, all intact. How about that? That's yeah. Well, I'll just say I wasn't entirely intact. I mean, I, like I said, the sense of duty kept me from like, you know, really just completely destroying myself, but I was very self-destructive and I had no self-esteem. And cause you know, when you're using boys for self-esteem at that age, you're just going to get trashed. <laughs> Let's just be honest. You're going to get trashed. And, um, it wasn't until, I met the man that would become my first husband. I've had three. Um, husband number one. And I was using cocaine regularly, daily. And we, you know, both worked at the same bar and you know, we had started dating. And he just asked me, he's like, why do you, why are you doing this? Like, you're worth so much more than that. And 
my sense of self-worth up until that point had really been tied into what I could do for other people. Like how well I can take care of the family and make lunches and take care of my siblings and, you know, boyfriends. We all know guys are no, no. how they are at that age. And so for me, for him to like kind of hold up a mirror and say, you have some worth outside of your ability to do things for other people. Um, it, it woke something up in me and I, well, I mean, you know, and it's so, so much, I mean, that's so true. I think, especially, I think women definitely can take on that role. Yeah. And, you know, um, you know, being a human doing instead yes. of, right. Um, you know, trying to find that worth or that value in, in how you serve or how you give or how you show up for other people. Mm -hmm. So, so how did, I mean, uh, that's very insightful for a man like, you know, that's maybe like into drugs or whatever. That's very insightful for him to be able to pour that into you for you to be able yeah. to be a catalyst for you to. Yeah. And he wasn't into drugs. I mean, we worked at the bar. So him kind of holding that up for me, I call him like, he was like my first guardian angel there, you know, kind of like my first week of call. First okay. week God was kind of saying, Hey. Yeah. So, so what, so what happened? So you, so you got together. So you like, yeah. So he and I got married and, and, um, we actually, you know, at the time we were in El Paso, Texas, we moved to Portland, Oregon, like <laughs> completely far away. You know, the marriage didn't end up lasting more than a few years because he was a musician and he had these big musician dreams and had dreams of me being like a homemaker, but that somehow like taking care of the house, but yet still earning enough money. So he didn't really have to work kind of thing. And <laughs> as my self-esteem grew, I'm like, yeah, I'm not up for this program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I have much love for him and, and kind of like what our relationship did for me. But mm -hmm. it really helped me get my own self-confidence and realize all the skills and talents that I had and that I could make my own mark in the world and, and do things um, so somebody. So now you're in Oregon and so... Yeah. Uh, so what are you doing at that time where you weren't, you weren't, uh, you're out of the drug scene? Yeah, I was working in IT, information technology. I actually got, you know, I had a number of certifications, Microsoft certifications, Cisco certifications. Um, I moved to Seattle and was working, worked for Microsoft, was on the, I'm going to date myself here, Windows 2000 ship team. <laughs> so yeah, 21 years ago. Um and I, you know, I stayed working in technology. And then, you know, when, when that relationship really broke apart, I, I moved back to Texas because that's where my family was. That's That was my place. Um, so I moved back to Texas. And unfortunately, shortly thereafter, the bottom fell out of the whole tech industry. Yeah. And um, I ended up getting into sales, selling cars. Hey. I went from like not talking to anyone except for on like instant messenger to actually having to like talk to people for a living. Wow. But that's, again, a, that's, a, that's a big shift. It that's was a huge shift. But again, it was God at work because God knew I needed to get from behind the screen and in front of people for what he wanted to use me for. So, so, so how did that, I mean, like in this process, I mean, are you, un, are you unpacking your backpack, so to speak, with all, all the things that you'd walk through with your, okay, so now losing the mom at an early age, going through the guys, the, the, the drugs, now the broken marriage. So is there any self-reflection here that's like, okay, like I've got to do, I've got to change, I got to change my path. I've got to do something different. Um, it really wasn't, it was, again, it was like God training me through ec economic necessity. I still wasn't, I guess I was somewhat dealing with some of the grief from my mom, like at, at the, the level that I was able to, mm -hmm. um, and I was, you know, developing healthier relationships with yeah. people <laughs> that I had in the past, but still very much, um, growing up. Yeah. So, so what was next for you? So now you're find yourself a car salesman, like or yeah. saleswoman, right? So, yeah. and so what, what, what was the next, what was next for you? I mean, like, were you thinking, okay, I'm, this is what I want to do the rest of my life. I mean, what was, no. I really thought I'd get back into computers when the market recovered, but, um, a couple of, you know, I spent a few years in, in the dealership world and then I ended up working for a, a lender for capital one. And, and calling on car dealerships. And this was like, yeah, another level. Because 
one thing about working in the dealership world, you work all the time and you are basically married to the dealership. Right. <laughs> and so getting to work on the B2B side, I got to even meet more people and kind of have more influence and kind of get to see this, this world that's out there and still very much in the car industry, but I got lots to meet lots of people and go to events, various events and, 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 you know, just develop my people skills even more. So, but what got you where you were on the self-reflection piece? Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, yeah. okay, so I've got to deal, yeah. with, gotta deal with this. I've got to yeah. deal with this. That's really, you know, through my, I got married again when I was in my thirties and my last husband, who was an attorney, really, I, I was finally at a place, you know, he was, he was an attorney. He was very well to do. So I was like not in survival mode so much anymore. And so I was started, you know, reading a lot of, self-help books and going to therapy and and really unpacking all of the trauma and the stuff that i had carried with me and isn't don't you find them probably working with teens and especially probably working with women you know that we have a you know i, I mean men are known to be the compartmentalized the where they compartmentalize things but i think women have a really a strong way of being able to uh, I call it Scarlett O'Hara. Most people may not even know Scarlett O'Hara. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so her famous line was like, I'll think about that tomorrow. And yeah, to be able to suck it up and do what needs to be done. Yes. Women have an ability to do that. Yes. Like where they have an ability to go, okay, okay, I'll think about that tomorrow. So as they long just as there's, Yeah. As long as there's needs of the family and you know relationship and you know people that you're taking care of as yeah. a woman, I think we can very much say, yes, I have this, but I'm putting it on the shelf because there's lots of things that need me right now. So, and and here's I've always been you know taught and and you know through my own understanding and through my own unpacking my own backpack that you can't bury live emotions, right? You just can't. If it's alive, if it's still in there, meaning, i.e., we'll say unforgiveness or, or or any of those emotions, you know, from years gone back, however long that is, mm -hmm. surface, it will keep bubbling up and will mm -hmm. manifest in a relationship and a conversation. I mean, it always surfaces. Do you, I mean, like, you, that, that is so true. Like, People, if you pay attention to the things that are coming up and causing you trouble in your life, whether it's with your children, whether it's with your spouse, whether it's with a coworker or a boss, those are reflections of things that you have not dealt with. Mm. And they are coming up and it could be in somebody that you judge that you're just like, oh my God, I can't believe this person is whatever. That is, it's something trying to wake you up. They may be, that person may be a more extreme extreme example of something that you actually have going on and you don't want to look at. Yeah. So you're like, Oh, look at that over there. But it's really, it's a mirror going, you have this. I and always thought, a way lower level, but yeah. it's, it's showing up extreme. So you can pay attention and you can say, Oh, I have something to work on here in myself. I always call it the spotlight. You know, we want to take the spotlight off of us and we want to put it on somebody else. So yes. if it's off of us, then we can, we can let somebody else look. We want to point out somebody else's flaws or shortcomings, because if we do that, then we don't have to look at our own. Yeah. We don't have to look at our own. You're right. And so it's easy to be like, okay, there's this trait that I don't like about myself and I want to bury it. And then here's it that it's like way, way out there in this particular person. And I can be like, oh, look at them. Yes. Yes. But it's a mirror. So, so in this marriage, now you find you have this time and this time freedom to be able to self-reflect. So yeah. you have this downtime. There's no, there's no fires to put out. There's yeah. no, like, so now it's like, now you have to be alone with yourself. Yeah. I had a lot of, cause he traveled a lot. I traveled a lot. And so there's a lot of self-reflection time and time for it to, you know, and luckily, you know, and, and, the blessing, the finances there to spend the money on some of the things that you can't spend money on when you're in survival mode. Yeah. And you can take that time to nurture yourself. Yeah. And, and so that was there for me. So, so what happened to you? I mean, like what, what, what actually unfolded in the, in that time frame to get you, you know, through this, in this journey, going through this journey part? Yeah. I mean, interestingly enough, you know, at, through that journey and through that healing and waking up, I realized in that relationship too, where I was completely compromising myself 
where I was telling myself, well, no one's perfect and overlooking something that was actually a really big deal. You know, like infidelity kind of, you know, somebody who's constantly has an eye for somebody else, um, for anyone else. And, and I was overlooking it as like, nobody's perfect. And so even through the healing process, I came to realize like this relationship that I'm in is also really unhealthy um, in its own way, not maybe as bad as prior ones, but in its own way, it's very unhealthy. And I had to make the decision to leave. Well, you know, that's, you know, first of all, there's a, there's a lot to be said just about that in and of itself, because, um, you know, when you find yourself in, in a space like that, you know, you can do one of two things. Like you go, okay, well, you can justify that you can protect them and justify their behavior because you don't have enough self-confidence and enough self-worth to say, I deserve better. Mm -hmm. Right. Because it's, so, and then there's, there was probably the fear of, okay, I don't, I don't want to be alone. Maybe I don't, I'm just speculating or, um, oh, that means the security of leaving a marriage and that now I'm going to have to go and now I'm going to be in survival mode again. I mean, were, the, all, a lot, were those things going through your head or was that kind of? Yeah. I mean, luckily, you know, I was employed, you know, my, my corporate position at the time, I was making good money. I mean, it was definitely still going to be financially. <laughs> There's things that, that were not going to be possible anymore. Right. So that definitely came up. It's kind of like, okay, you know, I'm going to be saying goodbye to a lifestyle that I've really enjoyed. Um, and, but I had to realize that I'm, if I don't, I'm selling my soul. Yeah. And, yeah, and I, I mean, so kudos to you for, you know, acknowledging yourself and your self-worth, um, that you believe in yourself that you, you deserve better, mm -hmm. right? Because there's so many women that are captive to that kind of relationship that they, they start, they start telling themselves, okay, I, it's like an abuse. It's like, you know, coming from an abusive relationship, you think, well, I deserve this, or I don't, you know, I can't find any better. You start rationalizing all of those things. So for you to have the strength and the wherewithal to say, you know, I deserve more speaks very highly of, of you and mm -hmm. your own system because a lot of women wouldn't have the courage to do that. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie and say it was easy. Um, in fact, when I left the relationship, it was really, he was, he kind of kept me in my place enough that like he was the extrovert. He was the guy who always paid the bar tab. He was the one that, you know, was Mr. Social. And so when, when we split apart, I didn't want to have to be, explaining to everyone what the deal was. So I largely isolated myself. I really have pretty much let go of almost, not every single one, but almost all my friends wow. and, and was completely alone. And as hard as that was, I realized that I didn't know who I was because I was constantly molding myself to be who I needed to be based on the situation. And so I had the time and, you know, to really say, who am I? What is it that I like? Like, I don't even know that I like this or not like this. I was just told that this is what I should like. And so I like it like to really, really examine who I am and it's what like I will believe and, and what I really like, like really me, not anyone else's influence. And yeah. It reminds me of the the movie. Have you ever seen the uh, How to Lose a Guy in Ten Days? Mm -hmm. You know, and and so she didn't know like uh, how she liked her eggs because <laughs> right. So that she, she, no, it wasn't. No, it was tw it was uh, not How to Lose a Guy in Ten yeah. Days. It was um, it was like Twenty One Dresses or something with uh, yeah. uh, that she was always the bridesmaid. Yeah, mm -hmm. she didn't know she she only ate the eggs. The way whoever she was with, she mm -hmm. ordered her eggs like they ordered their eggs. Yeah. Um, and and so I, I and to first of all, to be able to acknowledge that is huge because I think that there's so many women that are in that space and they don't even know that they that's who they are. They become so de codependent mm -hmm. of the relationship they're in. Um so for you to be able to acknowledge and recognize that is huge, 
cute. Well, when, you're, when you're all alone and you have like two pieces of furniture because you got to keep hardly anything and you're in this apartment and you're like, oh my God, now what? And you don't have anyone to call because he sucked up. All, he made sure all the friends are going with him, right? And you're like, okay. Wow. <laughs> You, you, but you know, isn't that, isn't that just how God really is, though? In the yeah. not to, not to. Yeah, when you strip away everything, all the distractions, all the BS, all that, you really do find who you are. You find what you're made of, and you find your peace. And you know, you get yourself to a place that you know that you can be okay, no matter what happens. Yeah. No matter what. I relate to this so much because I've walked in those same shoes. So I can totally, I can totally identify with what you're sharing here uh, to lose everything, right. To be stripped back where, you know, it's really just you and the Lord. And God, yeah. you know, I'm like, okay, God, like it's me and you now, now what, you know, what All right, you now what, right? <laughs> what, do you got? what do you got? What do you got? What do you got? So, so, so how did you move forward? Because like, listen, that, that place could have easily broken you. You know, I mean, yeah. it was a choice. It was a choice that you had to move forward. How did you break? How did you break out of that? And what what unfolded for you? <laughs> I, I did what I, I won't recommend to anyone else either. Is I like I got a new job and then also moved to a completely new city. So I moved to Dallas. I knew no one, like no one. I moved to a new city where I knew, knew nobody. You know, so outside of work, it was just me, and like it was really just me. I quit drinking for 18 months. Like I was like, and all I did was read. I'd go to work and I'd read and I'd read and I'd read and I'd reflect and I'd write in journals. And I, that was, that was my life. A lot of healing though. I mean, you know, so healing. It was so healing. I really learned who I made, what I'm, you know, what I'm made of, who I am. And, and, and I know that I'm okay. No matter what, I don't need anyone. I gained my own strength. I was like, I have God. I don't need anyone. Does that mean I don't want to be around anyone? Or No, but it means that I really, like, I don't have to hang on to anyone or cling to anyone or cling to anything because I have all I need right here. So, so how did you get to this space here? Because, I mean, like, where you are actually now, you've taken this accumulation of experience and life skills and, and, and all the ups and the downs and the ins and the outs, like, bring it all to focus to where you are now. Like the last breakup that I, that God put me through was like, I had the same kind of come to Jesus moment with, with the work that I was doing in the car business. It paid very well. You know, it was fun. I could do it in my sleep, but it was like the ethics in that business. They're just largely not there. I'm not saying hundred percent, not there. I do have a couple dealer friends that are ethical, but largely they're not yeah. and they will rob your grandma if they can. And, and it was kind of like God waking up again, like, just this, what you want your legacy to be. And I was like, no, this is not what I want my legacy to be. And so two years ago, that's when I became an entrepreneur. And I'm like, my focus is uplifting women and girls. Wow. I don't want, I want as many young women and as many, you know, teenage women, girls not to make the same mistakes that I did. And I want older women, women that have made those mistakes, that do have those battle scars to heal so that they can really become their full and best self. So, like, so, I mean, that's a, that's a big jump. That's a big leap from going, huge, you know, from, from being, you know, in this sales arena to being your own entrepreneur and, and mm -hmm. saying, okay, this is what I'm going to do to leave a, a steady income to be able to jump in and go, okay, I'm embracing all of this. And how do I make this work? Not only for me financially, mm -hmm. how do I serve the people that I want to? And how does that, how do I, how do I market myself? How do I get the word out? How do I, how do I start this process? What did you do? It's been a learning experience. I mean, I, I did have the benefit of, I did get an MBA over the years. So I do have the schooling and that, the business background, thank goodness. But, you know, learning the online space and online marketing was just, that stuff was not covered. That I, you know, I learned by doing, I learned by investing in programs. Some were really good investments. Some were not very good investments, but you know, you, you learn along the way. And so a lot of the journey was just really like learning, learning the things that I didn't yet know. 
Mm -hmm. and you know getting connected with amazing people like you and and really you know as, as women we have to look out for each other and, and we do need those connections and to, and to uplift each other and so i've been very blessed from that standpoint so 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 your focus is being you know helping women not I mean because i and i always say like it's really hard to help or serve someone if you haven't been through some stuff right yeah. and ladies like if you're going through some stuff now trust me it's not for you it's for somebody else that's that God's already got in your in yeah. your body, and that's going to be in your path that you haven't even probably met yet. Yes. And and so so how has that how has that been for you? Like being able to pour into, um, you know, and and help people break free because you know we talk I we talked about how we were going to be focusing on forgiveness. Like, mm -hmm. tell me how you you know as ladies listening in here. Let's talk about that subject matter because obviously you've been through a lot. How do you help those other help these people break through that? To, first of all, see it, then break free from it. Oh, I have I have like an amazing client case study on this. This is one of my very first clients when I started my practice. So I do um, in my coaching practice. I do coaching and I also do hypnotherapy in that level. I also have different where I help people with income streams, but this on this particular side. I had a woman who came to me and she actually came to me because she was like, I want coaching on, I'm, you know, I'm looking, she, she had, she's with somebody who's very, very skilled, but she was stuck in this like really low paying position. And she'd applied for a million positions, couldn't seem to get anything, even things that she was overqualified for. They weren't calling her back and her, she had her own kind of freelance business and it just totally had just taken a dive. And she was, you know, very, very type A, had my plan A, my plan B. And so I like, had her lay everything out. And I was like, you're blocking everything with your resentment. Like she had a lot of resentment towards her mother. She had resentment towards her ex because she was the career woman and they were supposed to have babies and the, the ex was supposed to stay home. But she had a really, and she had resentment towards her kids because she had really difficult pregnancy, really difficult with the kids. And so she couldn't go back to work. So she just had, was harboring all this resentment mm -hmm. subconsciously, all this resentment against so many people. And I, I said, you know, I'm going to work with you on, on hypnosis with this. Cause I think this is going to be something that it will help you release it. And so we worked for a few sessions and within a month, not only did her own business take off, but she got like her dream job. Like I had to write out, like if you could drive the, write the perfect job description for you and who you'd be working for, how much they would pay you, like all the stuff, what would it be? And she got it. And that was because she released that resentment. You cannot tell me it's not. That's the only thing that changed in her life. Wow. She released this resentment that she had, you know, because of how she felt her career had been stimmy because of her kids, because of her ex husband left her and all this stuff. And she, when she finally released and healed that everything's fallen into place for her. And she's still doing amazing right now. She's in Panama house, sitting some rich person's house and working from the beach remote in this job that she has for the County, which the County never lets you do that, but they're letting her do that. Like that is the power of releasing to it, forgiving and releasing resentment you have in your life. That is the power of it. So this is such a this is such a powerful conversation because you know um, I know that so many times and especially again you know women we 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 think we we think about that tomorrow and we don't realize how many things that we push aside that we try to stuff you know these live emotions and not realizing that it's 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 impacting our health. Yes, it's, it's, it's impacting our, our life, our finances. And I was always, I was always taught like, you know, forgiveness or having unforgiveness is like taking poison and expecting the other person to die. It is absolutely, you know, and so how do you, but how did you get her to own that? Because, you know, it's almost like dealing with a, you know, a drug addict or an alcoholic or whatever that, you know, that addiction mm -hmm. is, if you're addicted to hanging on to that because you think somebody owes you mm -hmm. and you want them to pay, how do you get them to, to release that? So they're the 
that chains of bondage are they're free from it and get them to see that. What do you, what would you do with somebody listening in with this, having this conversation? So it depends how deeply seated it is. In her case, I knew how deeply rooted it was. And that's why I chose to work with her through hypnosis. So I, you know, I did clinical hypnosis recordings. Well, I did actually did it live with her and recorded it. And it's like, you need to listen to this every single night. <laughs> you go to bed. <laughs> Um, so that's kind of, you know, that's kind of the way that's how I work with it. If the person's just like, if they're super type a, you know, they're the kind of person who's just like, not going to let go of anything. Um, so, let's, so let's backtrack. Okay. If they're listening in and they're going, okay, so how would they, how would you coach them to recognize they, mm -hmm. how about that? How would they, uh, yeah, let's So I, in coaching with people, I, you know, my first session that I do with anyone is I have them tell me everything. Like, tell me your whole story. I'm not going to interrupt you. I'm not going to tell you anything's not bad. I'm not going to tell you, I'm not, not going to try and one up you with the story. Like this is literally your chance to tell your entire story that you've never had in your life. I promise you. And I listen and I take notes and I listen and I confirm things that I'm hearing and I start to see the patterns. And when they're finished, because I let people be complete, I do not interrupt them at all during that first session. And I tell them what I see. I'm like, I see this. You have this going on here. You have this going on here. And part of it's, you know, intuitive. Part of it's listening. Part of it's just intuitive. Like things just like light up for me. And I'm like, this is where their issue is. And I'll tell them. I'm like, okay, when you were telling me this, you know, when you were speaking about this, I noticed this. This seems like it really carries a charge for you. And they're like, oh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Say so this, this right now, this thing from 30 years ago is impacting you right now in this way. And this mm -hmm. is what it's doing to you. Wow. Like it could be a health problem that it's, it's created. It's, it could be this. And I can see, like, I just kind of intuitively can see where that is. And I'll let them know. I'm like, look, you can release this. We can release this together and this is going to improve your life. Like, are you willing to do that? And if they're not like, well, but I can't possibly, you know, forgive this person for blah, blah, blah. Then I take one rat route. If they're, you know, if they're like, you know what, I would really be love to be free from the burden of that. Those are the easier cases. And then, you know, there's some coaching exercises that can, we can work through that um, to help release that. It all depends on how tightly they want to hang on to it. Sometimes people do not want to let go of their trauma. They're like, mine, this is really defined me. This is my issue. And it's like, okay, well, who can you be? So the people that are also that are really tightly, it's like, who would you be without that? Like if you did not, if you could, if it was literally something that you could set down on a shelf, who would you be without holding on to that? What could you hold in your hands if you didn't have this thing that you were holding so tightly to that's such a, that's such a great, that's such a great question. And I always, you know, I always like w working with my kids. I always help them. I don't try to identify like whenever you have unforgiveness is whenever you keep, you keep replaying the real of what they did over and over and over and over in your mind. And the more you think about it, then the more angry you get or whatever. That, that is, that is the yeah. first thing. Like, and you're fantasizing about choking them or whatever it is, <laughs> some kind of harm that you're doing. Yes. You know, that is one, that is one way to say, okay, I definitely have some unforgiveness in this situation. Or if you're thinking about a person or a situation, it could even be a situation. Yeah. It keeps coming on replay over and over. If you can't stop thinking about it. You know, and, and that is a true indicator. So if you're listening in and that happens to be you and that's something like you're like, OK, this is someone or something or an event that I have. And, and usually if we're us by talking about it, you're going to pinpoint it, whatever comes in your mind, <laughs> whatever it's coming in your mind right this minute. Rest assured that that is the one thing, at least right now, that you need to deal with. Right. First one. Mm -hmm. The first one. So if it's the first thing that comes to your mind, there is something attached to that. So how Lorna, like if they're listening in, how if they the, they go through this exercise, what would you have them do to break it that just to take the first thing? How would they break that? What would what would you have them do? So it depends. I'm just gonna use the example of what if it's a person, okay? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times it's a person. If it's an event, we approach it differently. But if it's a person, a very simple exercise that people can do is to write a letter that they will never mail, by the way, a letter 
to that person, even if they're dead, you write a letter to that person and tell them everything that you wish you could tell them. You can tell them how they hurt you and how you, they screwed you over and like, like get it all out on the letter, everything. You're not going to mail it to them. You're going to get all of that out and then burn it in a safe place safe place. Don't burn the house down in a yep. safe place. Whether you do it over the sink and you have the water ready to go or over the toilet or whatever, burn it. Right. And then take a bath. If you have Epsom salt, even better. Some kind of salty scrubs. If you don't have a bath, do, do a salty scrub in the shower and get all that energy off of you. Perfect. Because a lot of times your brain will keep stewing on things. It wants to be heard. And so by you writing all of that down, it is being heard. If you think about a child, like if a child's coming to you and they're like, mom, 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 and you're like, later, mom, mom, they're gonna keep going, mom, 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 until you like, okay, what is it, honey? And they're like, um, I have a dinosaur and he's really big and he's purple and he goes roar. And you're like, okay, cool. And they're like, and then they go play, right? Your brain is like that. If you do not give it, it's time to talk, tell you about its purple dinosaur, which in this case is writing your letter to that person <laughs> and burning it. It's going to keep saying, mom, mom, mom. That's going to be there. Even if you walk in the closet. Mom, mom. <laughs> That's that's a great exercise. That's a great tool. That's a great equipping like to that anybody can do like today. Yeah, you can do that right now. You can do that like right now. And, you know, so many times like, uh, you know, I, I, and I always say like, well, first of all, because I'm a believer, you know, and I know like, I, I mean, like, I'm like, okay, Lord, I just choose to forgive. Like, mm -hmm. say out loud, right? It's, it may not be how you feel, Right. But you can act your way into a feeling, but you can't feel yeah. your way into acting. You can't. You can't feel your way into action. You you can act your way into a feeling. Mm -hmm. So I always like, and it's, again, it's not easy, but I, I choose, if I choose to say I forgive, that's like. That's you can say, Lord, help me forgive. Yes. I, Lord, help me forgive. It really does help to do the letter though first because it does get out of your brain. Yes. And then you say, Lord, help me. If you're a believer, Jesus, please help me forgive this person. It's really, really difficult for me. I cannot do it on my own. I need you to help me. So I, so that's it. So that's a two step process. And I love that because, because sometimes even after the fact you go through the, you know, the thoughts come in, you can't yeah. find a thought with a thought, but yeah. yeah. using the spoken word, right? I choose to forgive today. Yes. Like that's, that's such a, that's such a powerful tool that helps me. So maybe yeah. that's for somebody else. So, uh, as, so as I you mean, know, we're coming down to the end. So like Lorna, like what would you, I mean, you said you've read a lot of books, like, Oh yeah. So, and you know, a lot of this, what we're talking about is when we're talking about coaching, we're talking about changing, we're talking about forgiveness. Can you share maybe two or three books? Maybe your, one is that your favorite, or maybe you have a couple that will be your go-to that you could um, share with the ladies like on this subject matter that would give them some, more equipping? Oh yeah, for sure. So like I would definitely, The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer, I would absolutely start with that one. That is an amazing, amazing book. I've read it multiple times. Um, and I highly recommend that one. And then as well as he has one called The Surrender Experiment that you would read second. And he, and he really just talks about surrendering everything to God. And in and in, in The Untethered Soul, it, it he talks a lot about forgiveness and kind of like how our brain works and not wanting to let things go. And it's it's very, very powerful to start the, the healing journey. Mm -hmm. And then I would say another author, I'm going to just, I have two of her books right behind me, so that's why I'm like going to grab them. Um, I think she's, she's a little bit more woo-woo, but she pulls from like all kinds of different religions and spirituality, but um, as well as... Christian, and I think she's actually Jewish, the author, but um, her name's Tasha Silver, and I just think her her books and her stories and everything, she, she talks about everything about surrendering to the divine, surrendering it to God, and so this one is, oops, <laughs> Outrageous Openness, Letting the Divine Take the Lead, and there's some really great stories and stuff in there, and then there's another one just Change Me Prayers. So this is all about like asking God to change you into someone who can 
you know, forgive, change you into someone who can trust that God meets all your needs, change me into. And so these are just, I, I keep them on my little stand there. And I, these are things that I just reread and they just boost me up. And the prayers are just great prayers in the moment. Cause even as a, you know, believer, I read the Bible every single day. I have devotionals. It's, it still helps to occasionally when you get just especially as an entrepreneur, as a business person, you get overwhelmed. And sometimes just like, I just need something to bring me back to just the simple, you know, like psh, quick. Yeah, that's good. Sometimes I open the Bible and I get like the perfect Bible verse. And sometimes I'm like, really Genesis. <laughs> yeah, no, I get, I get, I get that. So do you have like a, do you have like a favorite quote or like a scripture or something like that you use like on uh, like as your go-to or is something like okay something that comes to mind whenever you go okay i need something fast and you think about this then you grab onto it like a little handle do you have anything like that um you? i would say you know some of some of the words directly from the change me prayers like um dear god or to say jesus please change me into someone that can let go of this and trust that you are guiding me and that i can hear your guidance please you know change me into one that can turn this brain off and, and hear you, your direction clearly. Wow. That's good. Because what happens is our ego just starts to spin on things. And you, you, you know, that's my, my go-to for like getting it to shut up so that I can hear God's guidance. That's good. Because God's got the better answer. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> yes, that's true. So now if the ladies wanted, if there was some way that they wanted to connect with you or, you know, um, do some sort of like, session or whatever like that you have how would they connect with you okay there i got a couple ways to connect so my website lornamoon.com right there they can on that website they can book a book a free session with me to okay. chat and kind of see how i can help them um i also have a free um, guide on anxiety on calming anxiety and they can get that by going to lornamoon.com forward slash teach t-e-a-c-h okay so <laughs> like teacher <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do, 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 do. here we go. Um, so it is uh Lorna Moon okay. Okay. dot com. I'm gonna put this on here. Lorn. And and what was it? How do they get the free thing? Uh you just add forward slash teach. Oh, okay. And there you go. Yay! So there you go, ladies. So if you um, are want to actually reach out to Lorna, if you want to have some coaching and or if you want to have a free resource, you can go there. Um, she has a free consultation um, available for you. Um, so as we're finishing up, what was there any last words of wisdom that you would like to pour into the ladies here in the group? I, I would just let them know. I want every woman to know that you are capable of way more than you think that you are capable of. Whatever your dreams are, whatever your goals are, it doesn't matter the age, whether you're young, whether you're quote old or anywhere in between, it is possible. You can have the life that you want and it's just waiting for you. You have special gifts that God gave you and the world's waiting for them. So no. don't be afraid. Help is here. So so powerful ladies like this is you know this is like the message like larry and i are always so passionate about is that you are good enough right you don't have to get taller you don't have yeah. to get younger you don't have to get you don't have to get you know older you don't have to get you don't have to get anything you know you are special and god is waiting and he's got a plan and purpose for you you just have to be willing to walk forward and get out of the boat, right? Exactly, exactly. And so I hope that each one of you ladies had got some value out of today. I hope that, you know, uh, my prayer for you, if there's anything that you're holding on to, you know, uh, allow, allow God to take it so you can be free to do what he's called you to do. Absolutely. And, and so that, that's my prayer for you ladies today. I hope that you have such a blessed, amazing day. Lauren, I'll say bye to you privately. So yeah. let me, that's it for us today. We're live here on the She Network with my guest, Lorna Moon, and I am Taylor Thompson, where we are here. We're sharing her excellence. So have a blessed, amazing day, ladies. See you soon. Bye-bye.